Okay, so today I'm in the Seabrook collection here in Nocatee, and we're going to talk about um, best lots and how to pick out the best lot. And so this one's going to be pretty easy for me because I'm basically just going to go through uh, a lot of my customers' lots that were fortunate enough or smart enough to make a move on, take my advice, get some, uh, get a real estate professional that knows the community that lives here and knows what a, the best lots are like. And we're going to talk about those lots and what makes them the best lots uh, for resale, for privacy, um, a whole lot of different factors. And I think when you're, you're building in a new phase of development like this, um, the lot is super essential, right? Uh, and uh, sometimes I would even advise um, picking out the preferred lots in the community and then selecting your builder based on what builders uh, have those lots because the developer gives the builder the lots. And so uh, first thing I do is I look at a map and I say, I ask my customer, you know, what's really important to you? Um, are you looking for a lot of privacy? Do you want water behind? Do you want preserved behind? Um, do you want to be on a cul-de-sac a lot? You know, all these little factors, see what's available and then work our way down through that. And then based on those available lots, then we'll start talking about the builder and floor plans. So go ahead, let's go ahead and take a look, actually look at some of these lots today, um, just to advise you on what I think is the most preferred lot to build on and will be a better lot for resale in the future. And I always think about that because this is a long-term relationship with my clients and naturally one day they're gonna sell. And if they're gonna sell and I treat them really well, which I do, they're gonna call me back and say, hey, can you can you list our home to sell it? And uh, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to sell a, a home that's on a prize lot. So let's go take a look at them now. So as we enter into Seabrook, you'll see right here to the right is Palm Crest. They're the furthest along, 60-foot lots. There's Coral Ridge on the left side. Those are 70 and 80-foot lots, and they are the going to be definitely the last development to be done. Of course, uh, they are the only one also with an electronic gated entry, and they do have the largest lots left in Nocatee to build on. And then as you go forward, you're going to enter into Seabrook Village. Um, there has been a delay getting water here by the city, but as far as I understand, they're starting to get water. And when you see landscaping like this, you know that water is here because if there was no water, then there'd be no landscaping. And also, as you look straight ahead over there where that truck is, that's where Seabrook Park Seabrook Village Park is being built and that is well underway as well as they do say it's going to be ready in uh, the summer of 2024 so we're already almost done with summer 2023 right now um, so right as we enter Seabrook Village um, right off the bat I like lots that are in the back of the neighborhood um, and the first lot I'm going to show you today is what I call a preserve lot. And I like preserve lots because uh, you have those natural trees behind you. And um, even though a lot of these lots in Seabrook Village are 40 and 50 foot, they are skinny and they can be rather um, narrow. But some of the preserve lots in the back I really like because they're longer than usual and what you need to do when you're looking at an, uh, a lot with a particular builder, you really need to get that survey from them or uh, a, a lot outline and then a lot fit and that uh, survey should tell you how wide the lot is and how deep it is. Um, and standard lots are about 120 feet deep, meaning they go back about 120 feet deep. But some of the lots here in Seabrook Village in the back, some of these preserve lots are actually much deeper than 120 feet. And those are the lots I look at because 
Most people are going to want to put a pool in on their lot later on down the road. If not now, I always recommend waiting till after the build is done. Um, but if you're going to want to put a, a, a basically a, a pool in, you really want to make sure that you have a deep lot with lots of space. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one right now. Okay, so the first lot I'm going to show you is a preserve lot. And I like preserved lots because as you can see behind me, there's lots of trees, you've got that privacy. And this here, what I'm about to show you is a 50 foot preserved lot here in Seabrook Village. And again, you really need to get a hold of the survey um, and figure out what the actual dimensions of this lot is. Just because Seabrook Village sells 40 and 50 foot lots doesn't mean that the lot is definitely going to be 50 feet wide exactly. You want to confirm that with the survey, but more importantly, you want to find out how deep the lot is. And this is a really nice deep lot. I wasn't sure or not if my customers wanted to put a pool in later on down the road, but at least they have that option. And again, for resale, even if my customers don't want to put a pool on the property, I still recommend getting a deep enough lot to put a pool in because if you do decide to sell, it's great for resale to have the option to at least put a pool in. When people call me and say, hey, I'm looking for a house, they want that option at least to put a pool in should they decide later on. So again, this is the, uh, the width of the lot. It starts right there and it goes to there. Um, and more importantly, you're gonna notice right off the bat how deep this lot is, and I love it, and I'm really happy for my customers getting a nice deep preserved lot. Another thing you wanna look at is obviously um, how much the lot curves down. Um, sometimes you don't want a lot that has too much of a slope in the back, uh, so these are all little factors I look at as well, and uh, so I walk the lot see how the lot uh, feels and then of course your property line is where that black awning is there and then you notice it's cleared behind there as well um, which is awesome too because it just makes your property feel a lot deeper from the back of your home um, it just gives the, the the property more depth and just makes it feel a lot larger now these 50 foot lots are certainly not wide uh, you're not going to have a ton of room between you and your neighbors uh, you're looking anywhere between 10 to 15 feet on one side and 10 feet on the other side and that means you're splitting that property line so you're talking five six feet of your property line between you and your neighbor um, uh, and then they have five or six feet. So 10, 11, 10 to 15 feet wall to wall, and then uh, maybe a fence in between. You can do a black vinyl fencing, and then what people do is put a nice part of podocarpus hedging um, for privacy on the sides. So when you're in your backyard, this is what you're looking at. Um, and again, people put privacy walls up. Um, I know Toll Brothers is one of the builders that gives you that option. Um, or they just put hedges up like you see in some of the model homes. They uh, purposely put those privacy hedges up. So again, um, I'm trying to give you guys an idea from uh, a level of what I think is a good lot to the greatest lot, if you will. And uh, let's go ahead and check out what is the next preferred lot after this one. So the next best lot is definitely, I think, maybe a lake lot. Not everybody wants to be on the preserve. They want water behind them. And again, I think the key factors in these lots with uh, waters, and what I mean is a retention pond is what they are, is that it does offer a little bit more of a breeze uh, at certain times of the year than some of the preserve lots. I would also say maybe it's a little less buggy, but then again, water can attract bugs too. But the preserves are definitely very buggy. Um, but water lot, if you want to be in the water, is the next option. Now, obviously, it's very easy to tell here that the water lot is really dependent on where you are on the water. And in this lot, it's a very small retention pond. And as you see right behind the, your home here, you're looking into the back of another home. Now it's a pretty fair distance, um, but again, I think the more preferred uh, lake lot, if you're gonna be across from another house, is gonna be on the long end. So if you see here, 
on this end or that end. That's a longer lake lot, lake lot and that would be the preferred lot to me. So after a really long preserved private lot, my next choice would be a lake lot, um, a waterfront lot if that's what you're looking for, and preferably one that's on the end of the long side of the retention pond. And as I point to these three houses over here, um, those are model homes and they're not there for some odd reason. The reason the model homes are there is because that's the preferred lot. It's a lake lot the long way and that's why they put those models there. So that's a little trick too, a little pro trip when you're picking out the lots. Look at the models and look where they are and try to get as close and similar to uh, that lot situation that you prefer whether it's water or preserve. So let's go check out my next favorite lot choice after this one. Okay, so I'm still in Seabrook Village, and uh, after that lake lot, um, my next preferred lot is, uh, again, a lot that is in the back of the neighborhood where you're gonna have a little less traffic than in the front of the neighborhood. And the next favorite lot is certainly lake lot, but behind the lake, a preserve. And this is certainly what I'm talking about lake to preserve which definitely is great for resale and value so let's take a look at this view as you can see here this these retention ponds are man-made and they're not filled up completely um, but this one is a long view and then right behind the uh, retention pond is preserved where nothing will ever be built so as you're sitting here in your backyard your view will be of a retention pond and then preserve and this is obviously one of the preferred for me after that lake lot where there's homes across from you having a, 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 a water lot without someone behind you at all to give you more privacy now this one still has homes to the side and again the more room you can get between you and your neighbor the better um, and, and again, this is a very unique um, lot uh, that my customer chose. And the reason why they have a lot of extra space, and I told you before, usually you only get about 15 feet between you and your neighbor's house wall to wall. But in this case, you're looking at probably at least 30 feet. And that's because this is an access point to this retention pond. So they don't own all this property in between these two homes but um, they, there is gonna be extra space between the two homes, but they don't own the property, so they can't put a fence down the middle. Um, there is definitely a, a, a passageway that needed to get to this lake, and this is gonna be it. So again, that's the advantage when you're picking out a lot, is figuring out those lots that have advantages where you can get more space between you and your neighbor which brings me to my next favorite lot. Okay, so this is exciting because that last lot was a basic lake to uh, preserve lot, which I love. Um, it had a little buffer zone in between, even though uh, my uh, buyers don't own all that land, it just gives them more space between uh, them and their neighbor. And then now, even better so, we have here a pie-shaped lot which is Lake to Preserve. So this is one of my next favorites. This is a beautiful um, lot. It is a pie shape, and now it pie shapes out to the back, not inward. So as you see here, as I walk to the back of the lot, it gets wider and wider. So if they center the home properly on this lot, there's gonna be a ton of room between them and their neighbors on both sides. So this is a pie shaped lot and right behind it is a, uh, a retention pond. And of course, they're not filled yet with water so you can't see all the water just yet. Um, but this lake will be filled up and there will be maintained preserve behind it. So this is my next preferred lot. Now again, like I said, a pie shape is great, but you don't want a reverse pie shape where you got a narrow end of the lot on the back end and wide on the front. Prefer to have this type of lot where your wide end pie shape is on the back of the home so that you can enjoy that privacy between you and your neighbor. So this would be my next favorite lot. Okay, so in Seabrook Village, there are not many cul-de-sacs, at least in phase one. I don't know what's gonna happen in phase two. Uh, there are no maps released yet. They're still clearing the property, whatnot. 
But if you are looking to buy in Seabrook Village and you want to get a premium or the best lot, you need to be ready. And that's why it helps to have a real estate professional that has already got tons of builds going on in the community, has a relationship with the reps, and is able to really find out when those good lots are going to be released and when those maps are going to be opened up. So I showed you the last lot was a lake to preserve. Um, it was on a bin, so it definitely was a fantastic lot. But what trumps that lot is being on a cul-de-sac. And the reason I say it trumps that lot that's on a bend, even though that lot was big, it was a 50 foot. And unfortunately, um, in Seaburg Village, the cul-de-sacs mostly are just 40 foot lots. But in this case, for people that were okay with a 40 foot lot, doesn't mean the dimensions of the lot were 40 feet. It might be 40 in the front. Looking at the survey, it fans out way more uh, a lot more on the back end uh, than 40 or 50 feet. So again, the trick is, is really being able to figure out what kind of house you need um, because you can't put larger homes on the 40 foot lots. Um, you do have to put a particular size home on these lots, but um, if it's the home is sufficient enough for you, it could be a really awesome option for you. So what trumps that cul-de-sac lake preserve view is a uh, cul-de-sac lake preserve you. So not only are you in a bend, you're on a cul-de-sac. So if you have children or whatnot, you don't have to worry about too much traffic going through. And even being on a street with a lake to preserve um, and not exactly in a cul-de-sac, but being in a cul-de-sac street, that would be your next option. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, property. As you can see, um, it's definitely got a good amount of space between um, them and the neighbor. Uh, which is great. It's not your uh, standard 10 to 15 feet wall to wall. There's got to be at least 25, 30 feet. And again, uh, with the real estate professional's advice uh, and the sales rep uh, putting their heads together, having a good team, you would uh, find out uh, where the house is going to be formulated, put on the lot. It's what we call a lot fit in the industry. And it will show you how much feet you have on the sides of you, how much feet you have on the back. Um, and so you really want to make sure you situate, situate your home properly on that lot. And with good advice, um, you'll be in good shape. But again, this is a, a fantastic pie shape on a cul-de-sac. Um, they'll have lots of privacy in the back. And then this is a much bigger retention pond and then preserved behind, which will never change. And that is a fantastic lot right there, folks. But it does get better. Wait. Now, something to consider also when you're looking at these pie shaped lots, ultimately those are the best. Um, you're looking at the sides of the home and that's usually what I do for my customers. I take a look at the sides of the home to see how much space they have, how much privacy they have. And one of the big factors a lot of people uh, look at is, is there enough room on the side of the house to put your AC pad on the side of the home and not the back of the home? And again, because this is a pie shaped lot on a cul-de-sac, there is plenty of room for them to put their AC pad right here on the side of the home so it's not behind, they don't have to see it. And it, this, again, because of the, 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 the width of the back of the lot, there's plenty of room to put that AC pad. And that is definitely something you want to try to figure out if you can. Okay, so we left Seabrook Village and we're gonna go meander over to Coral Ridge. Of course, um, those lake preserve lots on a bend or on a, on a cul-de-sac are some of the most preferred lots, but sometimes people don't always want water. So I'm gonna show you really quick one of my customers' lots that they chose they did not wanna be on water but they really wanted that privacy and they really wanted a nice size lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna drive through Coral Ridge. Again, Coral Ridge is probably gonna be the last of the Seabrook collection to complete construction. Uh, Palm Crest was the first. Seabrook uh, Village was the second to get started and they're just getting water as this video is being recorded now. 
and then Coral Ridge has gotten started. Perhaps maybe phase two of Seabrook Village might take a little longer than Coral Ridge. So it'll be interesting to see, depending on how fast Coral Ridge sells through their 80 foot lots and gets building, uh, if uh, Seabrook Village phase two will catch up. Coral Ridge is Seabrook, and this is where they're selling 70 and 80 foot lots. And they are the largest lots offered left here in Nocatee, the master plan community, where you can still build a brand new home and also pick out the finishes. So this is pretty much it. And Coral Ridge hasn't released all their lots yet. Um, they have some certain prized cul-de-sac lots, cul-de-sac late lots, a lot of lots that I have my eyes on that I'm uh, waiting to help my customers secure when the time comes up. Some of the builders in here, including Toll Brothers and ICI, have done a bidding process on those cul-de-sac lots, um, which is not that great. But this lot I'm about to show you here was not a lot that was bid on, and it's one of my favorites as well. Um, even though it's not a lake lot, I like these preserve lots because of the privacy. Um, but what's great about this lot is that there's no one to one side of them on the left here. So that makes it a prized lot. You're only going to have a neighbor on one side, uh, no neighbor on the other side. And again, even though this lot is technically an 80 foot lot here in Seabrook at Coral Ridge, the lot starts here on the front and it ends all the way over there. So it's well over 80 feet on the front and then it curves in on the sides there towards the back, but the lot is massive. So it's not necessarily a pie shaped lot. It's almost like, I don't even want to call it a, a, a reverse fan um, because again, it's so wide on the back end. But again, I love this lot because it's preserved. It's super wide in the front. Um, giving you a ton of room between you and your neighbors. And um, again, you're in the back of uh, Coral Ridge at Seabrook. Um, I will say, you know, you do have to be careful. Uh, Coral Ridge at Seabrook is pretty close to Phillips Highway. So I'm very cautious when I'm checking out lots for my customers. I kind of do a listening test. and I kind of see if I can hear that traffic on Phillips, whether it's early in the morning around nine o'clock or five o'clock, I'm always out here on these lots because I always want to protect the best interests of my customers. So for that reason, I kind of like the lots on one side of the road, which are a little bit more distance from Phillips Highway. And again, those are all little things that I take in consideration when I'm helping my customers find the right lot. Let's go ahead and jump into Palm Crest here at Seabrook. This is the 60 foot lot product. This was the first community to be built out of the Seabrook collection here in Palm Crest. Uh, they were the first models to open up and operate out of. So Palm Crest is certainly further along. They have about 97 uh, or 99 homes. Uh, they're pretty quickly selling out. Um, a lot of the great lots have been picked out. And so I'm going to show you a couple in here again that my customers were fortunate or prepared and pushing to get and let's check this one out. Okay, so we're in Palm Crest and again, um, Palm Crest sells 60 foot lots, but if you're getting a hold of that survey, you'll notice that maybe the lot isn't exactly 60 feet wide. It could be actually more. And it certainly fans out on the back because this is a somewhat of a pie shape because it's on a bend. This home is on a bend. So again, when you're on a bend, that gives you a little bit more of a pie shape. It gives you a little bit more driveway. And if you have the option with that builder restriction line to push the house back five feet, do it. More driveway is more value. So right off the bat, you'll see the value in this home here in Palm Crest. Not only is it in a bend, but right across from the home is preserved and no one will be built right there. And here in Palm Crest, they did a good job adding a little dog part as well. So not only that, it adds value when your home has a uh, preserve in front of you, it has a park nearby. That's a value add for people and that adds value on resale as well. So as we continue to the back of this lot, you'll notice that because it's a, a pie shape, 
the ACs are on the side of the home. There's plenty of room for those ACs to be put on the side of the home so they're out of the way so you don't see them. Um, if you notice right over there, that orange stake at the end of that sand pile, this house property line fans out on the back. And then of course they have that prize lake preserve view and nothing will be built back there. It will look amazing forever. Now these people were really smart, these clients of mine, because they noticed by the models, which is just two, three lots down, that well, if the, if the models are on this lake preserve view, these must be really nice uh, preferred lots. And so they were keeping their eye on this one for sure and jumped on the opportunity because yet a pie shaped preserve, uh, lake preserve is certainly a huge value add and will be amazing for resale. Now, again, because it's a pie shape and it's a deep lot and you wanna look at those surveys and see how, how deep the lot is, they were able to put a pool in. They chose to do it during the build process through the builder. Um, and you notice here, they have a big lanai, plenty of space, and then also they still have a lot of backyard on the other side of the pool. So a win-win for them. Great decision on a great lot, a great build. Let's go check out the next one. So we're still in Palm Crest, and the next favorite lot for sure to me is having that lake preserve lot with no neighbor to one side. So this next lot is actually right here in front of me. If you notice, to the right of it is a uh, preserve, so they will not have a neighbor to the right. Um, again, this is also near the uh, model home. So again, one of the tricks of the trade when you're in a newer community, you try to take a look at where those models are and see what lots are available around them. There's a reason why those models are there. And this one was directly across, no neighbor to one side, and it does have a nice, deep, large um, preserve, uh, lake preserve view. Fantastic lot. Um, something that my buyers jumped on. They said, hey, that's exactly what we're looking for. Privacy is really important to us. Um, again, they weren't too concerned about having to be on a cul-de-sac. This neighborhood only has just under 100 homes, so there's only one road and one cul-de-sac, so it's not a ton of traffic. Again, a massively large lot, which will give them lots of privacy and space on both sides. They'll be able to put their ACs on the side of the home as well. And again, they'll be part of the side of their house. We'll be looking at that view and then also that lake to preserve view as well. Okay, so we've arrived to the ultimate lot. This is a cul-de-sac lot, pie shape with no neighbor on one side, just all preserve, and then lake to preserve on the back. And that is the ultimate lot. If you're fortunate enough these are the kind of views that you'll have from the side of your home and the back of your home. So all these windows of this house, the way we flipped it to the side, every window that they look out of from their living room, their dining room, their loft upstairs, their bedrooms have a view of this preserve. Plenty of room here on the side as well. And then on the back, a retention pond with preserved views. Beautiful size lot, really private. And again, because it has a little bit of a pie shape, another important factor to consider on these pie shaped lots is not just the privacy and space between you and your neighbor, but also the fact is that you have enough space to put your AC pad on the side of the home rather on the back of the home. It's a real problem here in Nocatee. Um, depending on the lot that you pick out, Unfortunately, you'll find a lot of the times that the AC has to go on the, in the back of the house, but if you have a, a, a wide enough lot, you're able to put it on the side. That again, for resale value, makes this one of the most prized lots here in Seabrook. But don't worry too much because there are gonna be more options for lots like this. I do believe so, but you need to be ready and you need to have the right team and real estate professional on your side. 
My name is Greg. My information will be in the description before, below. I'd love to be your resource of choice. Make sure you reach out to me, send me a text, shoot me an email, or uh, uh, give me a call. I'll be glad to help you out. Um, and then also don't forget to check out my next video uh, of Nocatee, 10 Things You May Not Know. I have a ton of library of videos here in Nocatee, so check it out and I'll see you on that next video.